Welcome, hi class, welcome to section 2.2, subsets. In this section, we're going to talk about the definitions of subsets, proper subsets, and the number of subsets that each set can have. The first thing we need to do is define subset. So they will say that A is a subset of B if and only if all the elements of A are also elements of B. So essentially, every single item that occurs in set A must also occur in set B in order to be a subset. The notation that they use for subset looks like a sideways U with a line underneath it. And I like to think of the line underneath it as being an equal to symbol. So it is okay in a subset if the two sets are equal to each other. Um, as long as all the set elements of A are part of B, then it's considered a subset. If all the elements of A are not in set B, then we would say it is not a subset. Notice the notation. They're going to use a slash through the subset notation to show that A is not a subset of B. If you are asked to prove that something is not a subset, all you have to do is find one element that is listed in set A but does not appear in set B. As soon as you show that the two sets a is not a subset of B. Well, let's look at an example. Determine whether set A is a subset of set B. So set A has boat, train, and plane in it. So what you need to do is look at set B and verify that B also has a boat, a train, and a plane in it. Because B has all three of those items, we can say that A is a subset of B. Now, notice that B has an extra item. B also has automobile. That's fine. Um, they do not have to be equal to each other, but they can be equal to each other. Now, there's a, another more specific kind of subset that's called a proper subset. In a proper subset, they're going to change the notation. They're still going to use the sideways U, but notice that the line is gone from under the sideways U. So what that means is sets A and B are no longer allowed to equal each other. If they do equal each other, that's a subset, but it is not a proper subset. So a proper subset, all the elements of A must occur in set B, but the two sets are no longer allowed to equal each other. If they do, it is not a proper subset. So let's look at this next example. Determine whether set A is a proper subset of set B. So we want to make sure that all the elements of A occur in B, but that A and B are not equal. So subset A has jazz in it. B also has that. Subset A has pop in it. B also has that. And subset A has hip hop in it. Okay, so all the elements of A were in set B. So you know that A is a subset of B but we want to make sure that it's a proper subset. So to be a proper subset, all the elements of A must be in set B, but they cannot be equal. Set B has two additional items in it. It has classical and rap, and because it has extra items that A does not, A and B would not be considered equal. Therefore, we can say that A is also a proper subset of B. Let's look at another example. Determine whether A is a proper subset of B. 
Set A has the letters A, B, C, D, and set B has the letters A, C, B, D. So, set A and B both have lowercase a. A and B both have lowercase b. A and B both have lowercase c. And A and B both have lowercase d. Notice there's no additional terms anywhere. So in this problem, A and B are equal to each other. That's bad. That violates the rule of what a proper subset is. So set A is not a proper subset of B. Now, if I didn't use the word proper subset, and I just asked you if A was a subset of B, in subsets, it's okay if they are equal. So A is a subset of B. Notice the little equal to line that goes with the subset symbol. But A is not a proper subset of B. Very subtle difference. On occasion, you will be asked how many subsets a set can have. Um, and they're going to call them distinct subsets because they want them to contain different elements. Mm -hmm. So remember, the order of the subsets don't really matter. It's the elements of the subsets. So um, the way you can do this is the first thing you need to do is you need to count how many items are in the set. And that is going to be represented by lowercase n. And you just need to take 2 and raise it to the n. If you take 2 and raise it to the number of items that appear in the set, that will tell you how many distinct subsets you can have. Remember that the only difference between a subset and a proper subset is that the two sets can't be equal. So if I asked you for the number of proper subsets you can have, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to take 2 and raise it to the number of elements that are in the set, but you need to decrease it by 1 because you aren't allowed to equal the set. Let's look at an example really quick. Determine the number of distinct subsets for the given set, S, L, E, D. List all the distinct subsets for the given set. So if you're using your formula for the number of subsets, all you need to do is count how many elements are in the set. This has four letters in the set. So you'll take 2 and raise it to the 4th power, which remember is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. You should end up with 16 subsets of this set. Okay, now the next thing you need to do is they want you to list the subsets. Okay, so it's not a bad idea to outline what you're going to do so that you know when you're finished. You should be able to come up with 16 unique groupings of numbers or of letters. Okay, so the first group you could have is you could include all four of the letters. You could include all S, L, E, and D. That could be one subset of the set. Um, you could also just have three of the letters. So you could have S, L, E. You could have S, L, D. You could have S, E, D. You could have L, E, D. And remember, the order doesn't matter. So S-L-E and E-L-S mean the same thing. So don't worry about rearranging them. Um, you're just looking for ways you can group the numbers or letters. So we could have a group of four. We could have groups of three. We could have groups of two. So we could pair S-L and S-E and S-D. We could pair... L, E, and L, D, and we could pair E, D. 
You could also have groups of one. So you could have in your subset just S, just L, just E, and just D. And then the last one is the one that people forget about. You could opt to list none of the elements in your set. So if you chose that, that would be the empty set. Most people forget to include the empty set. So um, we have come up with 16 different um, combinations of the letters. This would be all the possible subsets that you could have. Now, if for some reason they asked you for all the possible proper subsets, the only difference is you would have to decrease it by one. So there would only be 15 proper subsets, and that very first one we listed that had all four elements, that would not be allowed in the proper subset group because it is equal to the group itself. Okay, let me know if you have any questions.